course. Longtime friend of the program, dating back to the Mitrio Minute days. But here today, he is on a business trip. He meets Ryan Bader in the main event of the Bellator event on Friday night at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. One half of the Bellator Heavyweight Grand Prix semifinal. Semifinal. The other half, of course, is Chael Sonnen versus Fyodor Emelianenko Saturday night at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. He's a man who has competed here in the tri-state area in pro football. I hear his voice from behind the door. And, of course, I'm talking about the one and only, your friend and mine, Matt Mitrione. Look at this guy. Please, have a seat. Wait, wait, Jake, you forgot to put the mic up. I got, hey, I got, <laughs> hey, dude. I mean, what I, is I going on? I got it, baby. Don't worry about it. I got this, baby. We're it's, good. It's it's very it's very DIY over here. It is. Uh, Matt, how are you? How, how are you, you man? I'm good, brother. You're looking good. big, like strong. Uh, got muscles, you know what I'm saying? Got muscles. Is this the most built you've ever been? I feel like you're you're particularly big. I don't know. I've been, um, this was by far my least enjoyable really? training period ever. Can we keep the hat off? Sure. I want to see your face. I, I was gonna get. I'm getting, get, gonna get my wig trimmed at okay. some point in time. In New York? Yeah, probably. I need some place to get it done. And you want to know something else? Yes. Bellator's PR guy, Danny Brenner, the guy yes, who's yes, like, yes. my handler. Yeah. Um, he left us. He's leaving us to go to the uh, Red Sox Yankees game and okay. didn't get us tickets at all. So what? yeah, I was like, how selfish is that? Dude? Yeah. Like a, an iconic moment like that in the playoffs, and Danny's like, peace, yo, throwing a deuce today. Uh, yeah. I mean, that'd be nice, right? You can think about something else, get your mind, have fun, I'm go to a playoff PR game. For Bellator? Yeah, no. that's kind of whack. That's, I totally agree. But yeah. Did you tell him that? Whatever. I, oh, for certain. Okay. I told him I was going to throw him under the bus. Good. So, well done. Right off the bat. Let's get weird. It's good to see you. Hey, hey, I you feel doing, like brother? we didn't really have like a proper hello there. Yeah, I know. I got weird it's nice. Best. You know, I heard that you were coming in town. I said, I must have Matt Mitrione in studio. I'm not sure if you know this, but I work for ESPN now. I'm really proud of you. Yes. I saw Gina Carano when I was on the flight. Man. She was on. She's coming to New York? She was on Deadpool. I was watching oh. Deadpool on the flight, and I was like, you know what? That's my girl. Gina's the best. Did you see that she got inducted into She's the my Italian American Angel. Hall of Fame? Yes. In that Chicago, I think. Makes, yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. So proud of her, man. Are you Italian? 50-50. Uh, Irish Italian. Okay. I didn't even know there was an Italian American Hall of Fame. I didn't either, but she's in it, and she, she deserves, deserves it. To be. Hell yeah, she does. Yeah, she's awesome. Hell yeah, she does. Have you ever met her? Yeah, for sure. Met her. Two or three times. And okay. she's been awesome every time. Yep. Like, as cool as I would hope she is, she is. Right. See, I have her over my shoulder. She's she, always watching over there's us There's nobody here. better to be <laughs> over your shoulder than, than Dina Carano. Matt, we have a lot to talk about. Let's get it, brother. Before we get into your fight, can I ask you, did you watch Saturday night? I want to get your perspective. I don't watch fights, man. What? Yeah. Not even Conor Khabib? Nope. You've seen the footage. I've seen the footage. What did you make of it all? Um, how, how, how realistic do you want me to be? You want me to be real here? Come on. You are the I am. real. That's that's what I am, huh? I'm even surprised that you would ask that because I feel like that implies that you're not usually real and you're always real. No, I am. It's just uh I I'm disappointed, man. Okay, I'm disappointed. please tell me, tell me. Um so many people view our sport as um as a, a thuggish primal hobby that you can't support yourself on. A lot of companies don't want to put their money into it because there's still a negative stigma to it. Uh and I think that all that madness was just another stepping stone to bring us closer to 1996 again. Mm. Um, I think that any company that was close to investing in fighters and the corporations and the business and the promotions uh, in the sport itself uh, were probably scared off for another two, three, four, five years. Uh, and that sucks, uh, especially me being in the, in, in the uh, free market now of Bellator. That's one of the primary reasons why I left. Right. Um, you know, people are going to be like, dude, that's a negative stigma on us. And I don't, I don't want that. I'm afraid that would happen, and I'm afraid that uh, might have possibly happened. Wow. So you feel like it set the sport back. I do. Because my, my... And, and especially in the casual layman that watches it, yeah. now we're just a bunch of gorillas. We're just a bunch of thugs. That's is it, it possible that it almost confirms people's beliefs? Like already MMA doesn't have the best reputation. So people are like, yeah, I expect this from cage fighters. Yeah, yeah of course. So then why would it set us back? And then what's worse, like you see fighters that write like, well, fighters fight or cage fighters fight or whatever mm. it is. Like, no, dude, no. We get paid. We're professionals. You don't act like a straight jackass and go jumping over fences and flying karate kick people where they talk mad shit about your country or whatever it is, man. You have some form of control and discipline. I don't know Khabib, and I hear he's a great dude. Like, I hear a lot of really good things about him. But he just lost his cool at that moment, man, and it just sucks. I think it just set us back. 
So you have people who say, well, what did you expect? He talked about his country, his dad, his, his family, his religion. I, you say hogwash. Yeah, Don't do it. Tough shit. I mean, like, hey, like, it is what it is, man. Like, I understand you got it. You got to stand up for yourself. But then, then fight Dylan Dennis. Find some way to, to make that happen. And get, get him in a grappling tournament or something like that, right? Like, enter it, do a super fight, blah, blah, blah. Sell some pay-per-views on that, too. Mm. Um, but just that's just not the way to handle it. And, dude, I've, I've, I've been remarkably inappropriate norm, numerous times in my life. And I'm great at being inappropriate. Uh, and I think that was just an example of. So you think he should be stripped? I don't care. You don't care. I don't care. I don't care Punish? enough to give an opinion. I don't know. Dude, there's, there's, don't cut the what? There's no punishment in, in the UFC. Yeah. There's nothing real. It's right. all arbitrarily just said, and then they're going to go around, they're going to find some other way. Oh, well, it's a court of public opinion. He's going to be asterisk for life. Go to hell. No, he's not. Nothing's yeah. going to happen. Um, so, you know, good for him. That he Hopefully he doesn't get any trouble. I think he's the best fighter in the world. I mean, he's insanely good. Right. Um, I'm good friends with, with, with Luke Rockhold, and uh, Luke and I talk about his, his uh, Khabib's abilities um, all, all the time. Like, I mean, compared to Luke's. And it's like the, listening to what Luke says is just incredible. Glowing about him. It's insane. I mean, like, Luke's is probably the best grappler in the 85 division, right? right. He's very, very good. Him and Masasi are pretty damn good, mm -hmm. you know, whatever mm -hmm. else. Um, and Luke says that he struggles mightily under Khabib. Wow. Mightily. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And Luke probably walks around at like 200. Yeah, 210, 215 when he gets big. Wow. Yeah. Um, I got so many rounds. Dude, I, this was such a miserable camp, but I had so much time with why? so many people that are so good. But wait, why was it so miserable? Because man, like it was, it was so much wrestling. It was so much wrestling, like way beyond what my normal life is. Even like heavy wrestling for a normal camp, this was out of ten practices a week. It is, it was, seven were wrestling practices. Out of the three that were not wrestling practices, they involved two of the three uh, involved wrestling warm ups, wrestling after I was done, wrestling in the middle of it, wrestling drills. I mean, knee sides, peak outs, uh, uh, you know, I mean, every other vernacular that I never understood or knew before, I know now. It's just, and it sucks. It's hard on your body. It sucked. It was my least enjoyable camp ever. This is what, your, your pro fight, uh, 15 or something like that? I'm 13 and 5. I call myself 15 and 3. And so this will be, this will be 19. Why do you call yourself 15 and 3? I don't think I lost two of them. Okay. Which, which two for the record? Chet Congo and uh, Travis Brown. Right, right, right. Of course, the Travis Brown one. Mm -hmm. um, and you learned terminology that you never knew before? So it's almost your 20th pro fight. Yeah. And no, it's, it's good because heavyweights don't shoot. Yeah. Right? Typically. Right. And I know how to sprawl. I know what to do. But it was never beaten into me, like the mat returns, the knee slides, the Granby rolls, the, 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 the knee picks, the, the, the belly wizard, the, 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 you know, the, the butt drags. I mean, everything, everything that I was doing was so much. And coach Greg, like was Greg Jones. Yeah. Coach Greg Jones. Yeah. Um, all the time he, it was, it was okay. In the middle of scrapping. All right, here, uh, Matt, go against Logan, uh, go against this guy, go against that guy, Luke, come get him. And it would be in the middle of it where I had to change gears and just start just wrestling my, for my life. Like, wow. And if they could get me to the ground, dude, get him pregnant. Lay on top of him, punch him in his face, choke him. Like, just be miserable. And it was just a bitch, dude. Not fun. Like, <laughs> I don't ever want to fight a 205-er ever again after this. Really? Ever. Well, Chael. Yeah. Could well, he's an 85-er. Right. Okay, so that doesn't yeah. count. No. By the way, can I just say it right here and there? Chael was here before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you know. I he saw was him last like night. He looks bigger, ago. too, doesn't he? He's bigger, yeah. But yeah. he's like, he's eating a storm. Um, he said he hopes you win because mm -hmm. you're the easier fighter. You're the easier opponent. And I told him, I'm going to tell Matt this. And he said, yeah, please. I wish I could tell it to his face right now. Well, he'll get, he'll have a really hard time getting that out of his mouth when, when, uh, if we ever fight each other because my fist will be straight down his throat. Easier um, fighter. Yeah. The, I said, what? The bigger guy? The heavier puncher? He's easier fighter. You know, I, I can I can I can appreciate that. He says that because he assumes I'm a, I'm less of a wrestler. Uh, but do you, it's the same as same as Bader, right? I mean, like it's so easy to say that, but for you to get me to the ground, you have to get a hold of my body, and not many people do that very well, especially in the open. Mm -hmm. I don't get taken down on shots. Not many heavyweight shoot, but if I get taken down, I get taken down on the wall. I'm not getting back down by Bader or, or Chael. 
you know, it's just the way it's going to be. Um, and we do we work so much, man. We covered so much ground. Um, and I feel like I feel like I learned new things a lot. This camp sucked, but I learned a lot of new things. I feel like I'm I'm better than what I was before, and it's uh, dragged along kicking and screaming the whole way because I was so miserable and pissed off this entire time about wow. just getting dumped on my head. Matt returns, rolls, scrambles, switches, like everything under the sun <laughs> that I could possibly never want to do ever again. Is it one of those camps where it's like hard to get out of bed? You're like, yes. I don't want to do this. Yes. So how did you do it? Um, I, I, I always go to the gym because I'm brainwashed into it. And I would tell, literally, I mean, Coach Greg's over here. You can ask him. Like, okay. I would tell him, I, I, I'm not doing that shit today. And like, and 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 he would be like, yeah, okay, cool, man, whatever. And then like, I would go over, I would start to do something, and then he it just turned into a full fledged wrestling practice. And he just, I don't know, he just did the Jedi mind trick on me, man, and wow. like just made me wrestle all the damn time. And he kept tricking you all the time. Every day I would go in there, like, I'm not gonna do this today. My body's sore. I'm miserable. Cool, man, just leave. Cool, have a good time. And go off and do something else. And I would start to warm up. I was like, all right, well, my muscles are tight. Maybe I'll feel a little bit better. And the next thing I know, I'm freaking wrestling, man. Like, balls out wrestling. Wow. And now you do, you think, I know you spoke just briefly about Bader, but like, given this, how, how much do you expect him to weigh? Mid-20s, upper 20s. Okay. And how much will you weigh? Mm, 243, 244. How much do you weigh right now? Around Two, that? Yeah. Okay. Do you think Ryan Bader in his mid twenties there, two twenty something, mm -hmm. is the same Ryan Bader who's fighting at light heavyweight? Same plan of attack, same kind of fighter. He yeah. has to overcompensate for the twenty plus pounds that you have. No, uh, I, I, you know that's a thing, man. I'm sure he he wrestled plenty of lefties sure. uh, in camp. Uh, he probably wrestled uh, a lot of eighty fivers that are, that move as lefties, so he can kind of get an idea of how I move. Um, but. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't really. To be honest, I don't really care what he thinks about like how he prepared for it. I'm the anomaly. You know, I, I'm the different one. Like what Bader does isn't really that different than from what uh, most people in, in that and that have a wrestling background do. Um, Why are you the different one? Because I, I'm as big as I am. I'm as powerful as I am, and I move the way I do. Nobody else does. Nobody. Hmm. I don't even think how many what what light heavyweight moves like I do. Right. Right. Like I mean, there's there's not like. There's not even many 85ers that move like I do. Um, I was just wondering if you think that you'll have to use your wrestling as much as you prepared for, given the size difference, given how quick you are. Well, um, that's that was my mantra through this camp, right? Like literally what got me through bitching at Coach Greg and having him be like, yeah, cool, man, whatever, you're still going to do it, shut up, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing, um, was that I, I, I'm going to go through the misery of preparation, even though I know that the effort won't be needed to win the fight. Like I, I know what I have to do and I know what I will do. Mm. It's just the, 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 the process of preparing sucked. I kind of, I kind of like see the look of misery on your face right now as you're talking about this. Sucked. Was you're, not, you're not in a good mood. Was not enjoyable. No, I'm an irritable prick right now for certain. Yeah. Still. Are you, are you annoyed that you have to do this? The media stuff? Uh, you can no, be honest. No, I'm not. Because it's time to work. The tra camp is over now. Like, yeah. Camp is, I, I go in. I'm going to get my work, in, work out on tonight. Hopefully get my lettuce cut. Um, and, and, and go. I can act a fool and relax again. Uh, but, like, you, you have to change. You have to change certain things in your body. You know, like the way that, like, your posture in the fight, your, the way you move, your, your, my cardio had to change so much. Um, the the mentality of the fight. How come Randy Couture looks like um, Vladimir Lance Putin? Armstrong? Oh, okay. I usually get Vladimir Putin. Mm, I get Lance Armstrong out of that. Yeah? Yeah. Let's see. Um, How do you like your new digs, brother? Well, you see, it's it's interesting, Matt. You know, I work for the Worldwide Leader now. I don't know if you know or heard. <laughs> I, I work do. for ESPN. We've come a long way, Matt. I believe I sent you a text. Oh, I changed my number. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's weird because I texted you yesterday. Had to shake him off. Not then. What happened? I just, you know, man, I, uh, sooner or later, too many people get your number, brother. Wow. And like, but like, what's the breaking point where you're like, you know what? Today I'm changing my number. Enough is enough. Something must have happened. Tell me. I, I, I switched carriers. I left. I went from Sprint to AT&T. That's it. And then when I went, I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm done. I don't want the number anymore. Isn't that a pain that you have to like right now? I didn't know that. You didn't yeah. tell me. Um, Maybe I was the person. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't really care. And like, okay. if people get my number, cool, then, you know, they'll, they'll get it. Uh, but it, it's, 
no, I don't care. Plus, like, there's so many, so many people over time get your number, and like, oh, you know, I, I uh, like, I'm not married. I'm dating a girl now, but like, uh, you know, I was single for a long time, and I'm, you know, you're tip, passing it. Out. Yeah, I'm, you're doing whatever, and so like, you always get something. Like when you're single, like, and you move on from something or whatever else, they always have a way to kind of creep back in, and then like you start messing with. So it's like they kind of recycle themselves, you okay, know. Okay. And like, I, I just, I was like, I'm, I'm, I don't want it, man. I wow. don't, I don't want. I don't want it. I'm good. And that so, was it. When did this happen? Uh, in July. Did you feel like a weight was lifted off I your shoulders? I always do. Every t- I change my number probably. You know, I mean, you have probably yeah, three yeah, or four yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I probably change it every year and a half, two years, three years. Wow. I had this one a little bit longer than normal. but. Are you with the same girl that I met in Buffalo? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah. you guys have been together for a while. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to put a ring on it? Easy guy. Whoa. I've already been married once. I already gave away 50% of my assets. I'm You're done? Do it again. Yeah. No more? No, I don't need to be stuck in there 25%. Everyone says that. Yeah, I'm done, buddy. 100%. Is she knows that? Yeah, she knows. And she's okay with that? She, yeah. Really? Yeah. Was it weird? No. Okay. No, not at all. So you found the right one? I mean, yeah, apparently. She does. She's cool. She, she's a live-in. She's a living mean yeah. she lives with you. Yep. Did you go off Instagram too for a long time? I do, I do. But you know that, man. I always go off Instagram. I, I go feel off like social media. this one media. was a long one. Yeah. What, what what prompts that? You just say I I need a break? Yeah, I just don't like it, man. I feel like um I was involved with um I was involved with somebody like as far as Kale and I were kind of on a little bit of break for a little while. And um and like they were talking about my my uh, social media career and it was like well you need to separate your 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 fighting life versus your personal life and all this other stuff and you can't mix the two and I was like do I just that's so many more rules than what I want like do I I'm I'm a proud father like that's the first thing I say is a proud father of three awesome kids you know right. like that's what I am like I can't separate that from me being a fighter and if you don't want to pay attention to my life or pay attention to my career or invest in me then to to go to hell like I don't care like I'm I'm a dad and I'm always gonna be a dad so like like Matt Mitrione the fighter is still Matthew Mitrione the father I can't separate them right uh, so that's what it's gonna be man and I was like I was I'm sick of it man I don't want all the rules and all that other bullshit like I'm just gonna be me brother like I'm old I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat that shit. I'm not gonna get now? any I'm not gonna get much more popular than I already am already you never know or lack thereof. Knock out Ryan Bader, become a heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is for certain. But I mean, I'm still going to be me. So, sure. if, and pe- most people in the MMA game know who I am. Right. Like, if they're not, if they don't like me, that's one thing or another. But, like, so why do you come back? Why don't you just get rid of it for good? Um, because I, I need to, I need to, my kids really enjoy it. They enjoy your Instagram? Yeah. Why? Because, like, because I talk about them, I post stuff oh, with okay, them, you know, okay, like, okay. Like I, we we that's, we crack jokes on stuff. They make fun of me for stuff like that, and I still enjoy it. Like I still enjoy interacting with fans, right? right like, right. like I always want to give them some. Like, like I'll post embarrassing pictures of myself or something. Like when I was in college, right? And be like, whoa, geez, look at this one, you know, right. or whatever else. And I get a kick out of it, but I just all the time it's something. And I think that like, I think there's such a massive need for attention and look at me culture, and I think it's a shame. And I think that that's, um, I think it hurts a lot. In a lot of different aspects, so like I, I try to limit that, and it's easy for, it's easy to fall down that slippery slope of like of needing more attention than what you really think you, sure, than what you probably sure. should deserve. Competing for likes and retweets yeah, and I all don't this want stuff, that shit, man. it's just a lot. I don't want it, brother. You're, you're eating and you see people next to you; they're taking pictures of their food. Like, who wants to see your food? I don't yeah. want to see your food. Nobody really does. I that don't shit. care about your food. Yeah, you and know? they might like it just because they're flipping through it, but that's about it. Or they might be like, or your friends might be like, "Oh snap, where's that from? Oh, I cooked it. No shit. Oh, by the way, I cooked. Uh, I caught a a mahi a dolphin. I saw that. Co- yes, caught it, cooked it. Wait, a dolphin? That night, I caught a dolphin fish, mahi mahi. Mahi mahi's dolphin? Yeah. I never knew that. Not dolphin, dolphin fish. Dolphin. What's the difference? Uh, one's... Massive. One's a mammal, one's a fish. Oh, you caught it. I got it. Caught right. it. Deep sea fishing. Uh, you know, um, Barstool Sports. Yeah. Sean Latham, the twenty dollars chef. Okay. Uh, we are down. At, we are down in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Uh, went fishing up in West Palm. Caught a dolphin. Brought it back. Filleted it in the kitchen. F- uh, uh, cooked it up. Made blackened mahi mahi tacos out wow. of it. Wow. It was dope. How was it? It was awesome, man. How, how many pounds was it? It was probably ten. Probably ten pound fish overall, not huge, okay. but it was enough to feed six people. Wow! Have you ever caught a fish that big before? That might have been the biggest fish I ever caught. And it's funny because like I play, uh, I play like Fortnite online. Oh yeah! I had to leave it back in Florida, so I didn't bring it up here, so I'm not wasting my. Well, you can do it day. on your phone. 
Yeah, I'm, I don't. Mm-mm. You don't do phone. What do you I do? I can't do it. Uh, I play uh, PS4. But now they have cross. They have cross play. So now Xbox can play with PS4 now. Whoa. So I play with guys that are way better than I am, and so they just pick, I piggyback on them to get victories. It's pretty much how it goes. And my kids and I play too. So like we just get down Online? and get weird. Yeah. You know what's cool? There's a dude. Um, I'll give him a shout out. His name is Jail Singer. And when he plays with my kids. If uh, when other people chime in, if they swear or get rowdy, he'll be like, "Hey, uh, uh-uh. uh." He'll be like, he'll he'll boot them. He'll be like, wow. "No, no dice. Like these are." He's big time. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. He's 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 pretty solid. Okay. Um, and he's like, "These are twelve and eight year old kids, man. Like, don't be talking like that. Like, yeah, you can't yeah. hear it in their voices. Don't talk like that." And he's like, really respectful. My kids even brought it up to me. Hey, this dude's really cool to us. You know, blah blah. And it's you know it's dangerous, man. If you open mics up, oh, you can get some weird stuff yeah. online. I'm not looking forward to that. My kids aren't quite there yet, but you know, I'm a Fortnite expert now. I, I did not know this. You know, I, 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 I'm I friends with Ninja. Do you know Ninja? So, dude. What? If you know him, yeah. my kids will lose their mind. Oh, yeah. But they're starting to turn over to some other guy. What do you mean? Like, I can't remember his name's like. There's only one Ninja. No, no, there's not a Ninja. He's like some other guy. No, I mean, there's only one Michael Jordan of yeah, gaming, right? That's, that's him. But yes. my kids will lose their minds. And, like, they are like, Dad, can you please play with him? And I was like, dude, no. I'm not that guy. But I hear that Sugar Sean's really good, too. O'Malley, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a little bit so of So how issue. do you know there's Ninja kid? I went to his house. Shut up. I'm not really friends with him, but I interviewed him for Sports Center. I went oh, to yeah? his house. He lives in a mansion now. He I just bet. moved in. He's making like a seven hundred fifty thousand a month. Do let's not talk about taxes for that dude, all right? Let's okay. not do that. But a month. That's that's loot, um, From just playing. And I was there while he was playing. It's insane. He's dude, in he's a basement so good, and he's just there for ten to twelve hours a day. You imagine playing that? Fortnite, only Fortnite. So my buddies at Barstool have uh, like a little section up there, you know. Actually, it's not Barstool; it's Pat McAfee show now. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah so he yeah. left, you know. He left, yeah. And so He's he has a like a former two, punter for the uh, Colts. Yeah, all right. pro guy, retired, yeah. blah blah. Yeah. Um, and they have like a, a Fortnite station in their place where they have like pros playing in there, and they get like eight to twelve kills a game or whatever, and they just ransack these these floors and like I've seen them just get ran through by like certain streamers, not like a ninja guy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. like other people like that, and they get like. 20 kills a game like so why not bring it here just to have you know something to do an escape you know because man it's a distraction like it is? I, i'm here for i'm here for work so like are your kids coming uh no they never come brother you, your son came one time he came he went to, to london but that was because i was oh, in london and we had that vacation i was fighting oh you were yeah so, yeah, I so you did london. come the one time so but right. we went to we went to england scotland ireland iceland yeah so now i talk, I took jacob to iceland and, and whatever else and so I was talking to Jonah. I was like, Jonah, he's nine. Okay. You're getting to be that age and you're behaving really well. So now you need to come up with some place you want to go to go and get a vacation. Just you and me will go get weird, you know? <laughs> and he thought about it for about an hour and he's like, Dad, I know where I want to go. I was like, Yeah, what's up? He's like, And I'm thinking somewhere, continental United yeah, yeah, States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, I want to go to California. Yeah, yeah. Dad, I want to go to Iceland. <laughs> okay, all right. Because like his brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, of course. so now, but right now in October, it's like a really strong Aurora Borealis. Okay. So it's like the best time to go, even though it's like 20 hours of darkness, right. is that you can get Aurora Borealis. So they have like these snowmobile like trips that you can go out there to jump in this secluded like water hot steam thing. And then you jump in a uh, snowmobile and go see Aurora Borealis. So will you go with him? Yeah, hell yeah. You're going to take him? Yeah. You booked it? Nah, not yet, but I okay. will. Because it depends on uh, how healthy I am after the fight. Right, if anything right, right. happens. Right, 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 right. So now, did your other kids get jealous? Jake, I told Jacob ahead of time. I was like, hey, look, man, this is the way it's going to go. Like, okay. Um, Jonah's getting that age. I've, you've done a lot of stuff that most kids yeah. don't get a chance to. Yeah. So now it's Jonah's turn. And Gia was like, hey, when I'm old enough, do I get the dad too? Yes, you do. Okay. Right, cool. By the way, my daughter, Gia. Well, I was just going to ask you. I was just about to ask you. I swear on my life. I appreciate that. Yes. I believe it. Uh, she is now playing piano. Wow. She does uh, full gymnastics, bars, and whatever else, uh, all hand stuff. She does um, tap dance and something else too. Like wow. she is, she's doing so well with her movement. So she's it's, good. It's incredible. She's a case How, study. A case study, really? Yeah. yeah. She's, a, she's a miracle. It's insane, man. Absolutely insane. Does she have 100%? Uh, um, she's probably as close yeah. as she can be. So the only thing that she couldn't really do is that she, this muscle here was still active. This muscle here was was still numbed. So she, when she would try to squeeze her fingers together, you use that muscle. Okay. When you pull it apart, you use this muscle. Ah. And since she couldn't feel this one, when she was trying to squeeze her finger, she was pulling that one out. Wow. So she couldn't squeeze her finger in. But piano has kind of taught her to pull it back in because she had to use yeah, yeah, all yeah. of her brain to think about hitting keys. Wow. And like reaching. So it's it's been great for her, man. Good for her. Yeah. How old is she now? She's seven years old. Seven. Wow. Yeah, so she'll she, be eight in uh, November. So she's in third grade. Yeah. Or second grade. Third. Third grade. 
Um, I feel like I've kind of, even though I don't really know them personally, I feel like mm-hmm. I've sort of seen your kids grow up in a weird way. Like not, you know, yeah, yeah. through you, yeah. like vicariously through you. Yeah. Also, that's why I said forget. I can't separate being a parent. Yeah, you can't. Who I am, brother. When I found out I was going to be a dad, you you gave me advice. You remember right. that? I did. First time. Now you got 15 kids. 15. <laughs> Who it's knew unbelievable. It, it happens And fast. I work for the worldwide leader. Dude, what a change. Huh? What a change. Well, when, when, that, up. when that talk started, yeah. was it out of nowhere or were you fishing for a little bit? Uh, which talk? The worldwide here? leader, yeah. Uh, well, my contract was up. Yeah. And so there was some talk. And, and when I was let go from Fox two years ago, uh-huh. there was some interest back and forth. I met with them, but uh, they wanted me to be full time. And I was still with yeah. MMA fighting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So then once my contract with MMA fighting was up, then there was an opening. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. And I was still there just waiting on it. Well, I don't know about that. We had to sort of rekindle the fire, but yeah. it's all good. That's I've awesome. only been here like Ah, almost four months so still getting my feet wet yeah but i'm curious because i was in vegas on saturday and i'm just curious like what are you doing like the entire world Mm -hmm. not just mma Mm -hmm. is watching that fight right yeah the sports world and it maybe transcends what are you doing saturday night i was sleeping you're sleeping yeah at midnight you're sleeping yeah i was sleeping i was sleeping for the Derek uh lewis fight because I, I remember getting texts that woke me up. Like, dude, his 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 post fight interviews are hysterical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, what'd he say? What He's a legend. Blah. Yeah. So I heard he, I, I didn't watch it. Heard right. he was losing pretty much for two yeah. and a half rounds. Yeah. And the last 15 seconds, dude stood in his range and Derek slept him. Yeah. I mean, that's wild. And there's, there's no part of you that's like, man, this is a big one. I want to watch this one. Mm-hmm. Just because you're not a fan? Um, or is it because it's so close to your fight, or is it? No, I just, I just I, I'm surrounded by violence, man, all the time. I don't need to watch anymore. Right. Like I don't, I, don't, I, I have, I separate. So you never it. watch? No, I don't watch fights. Do you watch football? Not really. I watch college, but I'll watch like half a game. Like I was at Miami, Florida State this weekend. Oh. And I left at halftime. Just bored. Yeah, just, I, I, I just, yeah, it's just not my gig anymore, man. Mm. I, I'm, I mean, it's, I'm lame. It's just what. So it what is. do you, what do you enjoy doing? Playing video games? <clears throat> Up with my kids. With your kids, yeah, not alone. Yeah, like no, like I, I just, I, 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 my kids are involved in so much stuff. I have three, and they're all they're involved in so many. I told you, G is involved in four things. Jacob's in two. Jonah's in three. So there's always something going on. And if not, like I hit up my ex wife and be like, "Hey, man, I'm home. Can I, can I hit the kids for this long? Yeah, no problem. You guys in a good spot? Uh, at times, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we try our best. So when you're in Florida. How long are you there for, for your training camp? Dude, I was down there for a long while. So you don't get to see your kids for months? No, we FaceTime, and I uh, I flew home for a week. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it sucks, man. It's tough. And, like, I had to miss Jacob's football games. And like, yeah, it's tough. Like, um, so I had to be, you know, and he asked me, and he's, he's not very good at football, you know, so he's just starting out first season ever. So, um, he, hey, Dad, how come this goes on? Or how come this? And I have to kind of try to explain to him. Over like a, over over WhatsApp, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Because yeah. you have an iPhone, I don't. Sure. Oh. So like, yeah, over, why'd you get an iPhone? Because I'm not uh, I'm not a conformer, brother. I really <laughs> enjoy for, for the sake of your son. Well, we use WhatsApp. You know, I view people through the lens of like, are your texts green or are your texts blue? <laughs> yeah. You're a green one. I know. Uh-huh. Like I know beforehand. Oh, I need to text Matt. He's green. Mm. And it's annoying. That's how everyone goes. should be blue. Uh-uh. No, because uh-uh. I my, my my platform is so much better than y'all's. It's non-invasive, like I, 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 an Apple platform is. Uh, I'm happy with it, man. I'll stay it. You're okay with your son playing football? That was a discussion between my ex-wife and I. Um, no, not really. But he felt like he was getting left behind, uh, oh. athletically and socially. I understand that. Um, I think that. Uh, they're not in a highly aggressive location, so the fo- quality of football is not really the same. Okay. Um, and uh, it's going to take him some time to see if that's his sport or not. He enjoys it, but if that's something he wants to stick with. And I think from that, we'll... Uh, what are you looking at over there? Looking I was looking at, at that picture. Is that Crow Cop? Yes. Is that after a Gonzaga fight? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I was like, damn, that dude's stacked up. He's think- got muscles. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just I was like thinking. you, yeah, something like that. Well, for a second, there, yeah, for a second, I just saw your like attention wander off. I was no, like, no, I was, I was still at? focusing. <laughs> I get it. Um, no, nah, man, it. it uh, do you know why I asked you that question? Why I saw. Uh, I don't know. Do you have ESPN Plus? No. Please say yes. No. All right. Well, you should sign up for it. It's just right. four ninety nine a month. Right. That's where you can get my show with Chael. Oh, great. Okay, I'm sure you care. I'm so excited. Uh, well, there's a documentary, 30 for 30. You've heard of 30 for 30? Yes. We were actually talking to a lady out there. Okay, yeah. They she do. was great. Her name's Jennifer. Great chick. Okay. Yeah. Um, they just came out with a new one on Junior Seau. Ooh. Man, 
you know you know about a story right mm -hmm. he committed suicide but like the stuff that he went through with his brain and the the pain that he was going through uh man i, I have a hard time watching football knowing and i mean and i can't imagine like uh um hernandez mm -hmm. from the patriots aaron. aaron hernandez that guy was in his mid-20s mm -hmm. and the cte that he had so is I've there got, worry i've got for my children yeah. absolutely yeah absolutely what about for yourself uh no uh, so and the reason is is that uh, I am very careful with my brain. I don't, and we've talked about this before. I don't spar. I don't put on 16 ounce gloves. I, you I, never spar, right? I do not. You know I, what Shale does? What? Four times a week, three times a week. He used to spar every day. Yeah, I don't do that. That's nuts. I don't need to do that. Um, like I, I, I spar, I work for uh, distance and timing. Um, I don't spar for effect. I don't spar for result. Um, and I think that 16 ounce gloves are dangerous, uh, much more dangerous than MMAs. Uh, reason being is that when you throw 16s, there's two, this is a two part answer. Um, when you throw 16s, first of all, what would normally fit through with MMAs does not slip through with 16s. Hmm. So you in turn either A, stop throwing it, or B, you throw it harder to get the desired result. So all it does is cause more damage. That's it. Um, uh, or it, it, it makes you not throw things that would be successful. So you might as well work on the control and the timing and the distance of how you throw it, right? So if I throw a straight left, okay? If I throw a straight left and my thumb is, is parallel or down, right? Then my hand's gonna be wider than it is my thumbs up. So maybe instead of throwing a straight left with my thumb the way I'm typically gonna throw it, maybe I throw an uppercut, right, with my thumb up, so now it fits through your guard. Mm. So now I'm not punching your forearms, I'm hitting you square in the face. Or at least I can hit you in the chin, lift your chin up, and then I can come straight over the pipe with a hook or, or a, a straight, uh, you know, or, or an overhand. Something along those lines. Um, and I think you can work on those. You can, you can be a lot more creative with 16s on. Uh, and I think that um, you're not punching for damage, you're not punching for result. It's strictly placement, because you'll sleep somebody or cut them really bad with, with MMAs on. So I think it makes more sense for a career. I think, I think that's, for me, it was really solid advice that, that I happened to stumble into myself. It was after I got this orbital broken in practice, and I was like, nope, never again. Sparring? Yeah. Wow. Won't ever do it again. How long ago was that? 2012. And, and what were you using? Uh, we had MMAs. Okay. And then I was like, I was like I'm not doing it. You did it? it. Um, you don't want to say? Nope. Why is that? Like, I mean, you're just sparring. He didn't do it intentionally or maybe No, no, but it's just like, it just. It's just a code. Just, yeah. Just happens, brother. You know, yeah. like he broke it and I was like, what, the, what the hell, dude? Like, wh why? You oh, know? Oh, cause he went too hard? Uh, no, not necessarily went too hard. It just, just, it just, just didn't, didn't make sense at the time. It wasn't an aggressive scrap. Okay. Um, and it just happened, you know, and he's, he's a friend of mine. Uh, still? Yeah, still. Uh -huh. um, Teammate? Uh, yeah. And we, I even trained with him. The Sean McCorkle is in it. Yeah, <laughs> totally corky because he has that much power. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's just after that, I was like, you know, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not taking a chance getting injured, going into a fight and losing a paycheck sure. just for this, for somebody else's ego. No, I'm good. And so you're with Combat Club now, right? No, uh, Combat Club's up north. We're friends with them. Oh. They're in Fort uh, Fort. It's not Fort Worth. No, it's Fort Worth, Texas. Whatever it is, can't remember. Okay. But they're up north. Um, but I don't go up there too often. But uh, we're down with Henry, uh, uh, Hard Knocks 365. Oof. Oh, wait, I thought Henry was combat club. No, he was. He was? He oh. was. Uh, but Henry has his own school now with Coach Greg. Okay. Um, down at, at Hard Knocks 365. Where's that? In Florida? Uh, it's North North Lauderdale. It's um, commercial in 95. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. Um, you used to be managed by Glenn Robinson mm -hmm. at one time. Mm -hmm. w what did you think when you heard about his passing? Well, I've said sucks, man. Uh, he wasn't very healthy for a, for a while. He wasn't. Um. And he tried to have some stuff done. It just didn't work out too terribly well. Uh, he was a good dude, man. He just uh, this. Really, if you want, if you want my totally honest opinion, the sport Please. of MMA ate him up. It just he was too nice of a person, too giving of a person, and all the cannibalistic parasites in the sport came and got him. And then he wasn't good at telling people no. Hmm. No, I'm not gonna do that. No, I can't do that. That's unreasonable. He would say yes, so that way people would leave happy, but then it wouldn't happen, and the stress would grow even more, and it's compounded because there was so many people that had all so many things to bitch about. Um, and uh, when the teats out, the, the, you know, it's gonna get worked over, and that's what it was. I feel like you have a love-hate relationship with the sport of MMA. Like you like doing it, but you don't like everything surrounding it. Um, the culture, the politics. 
the personalities. Well, I, I don't like what I don't I don't like what the UFC turned into. And mm. I'm happier now at Bellator than I was at the UFC. Yeah? Yeah. Why is that? Um, because I felt like I felt like the UFC took the onus of promotion squarely off of their own shoulders and they just became people that put on events and the promotion had to fall on the responsibility of promotion had to fall on our shoulders. We had to carry that. We had to carry everything. We had to do everything for them. So not only are we being the personalities uh, that, that are the fighters, we're also the sellers. We're also the promoters. We're also this part and that part. Um, and I didn't like how they, they forced in my opinion, they forced so many things on us that weren't ever discussed. Like, why in the hell? Why in, 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 in I can't figure it out. Why anybody would agree to a five-round main, main event fight when you're not getting paid anymore. Hmm. You're going to go through two more rounds and all that extra training to get effed up and all this extra beating in the head and everything else for other people's enjoyment, yet you're not making more? What? How does that make sense? Cool, I'll fight a five-round fight for a main event that's not a title fight if you pay me 85% more or double my purse. Not 66% more because I have to go through a lot more in practice and everything else. So if you're going to double my purse, then sure, I'll do that because the money's worth it. But just for your enjoyment and you get more money out of it and I don't, no way in hell. And they did stuff like that. They did the, the marketing aspect, right? The Reebok. They, and I told you about what I talked to Lorenzo about uh, before I fought Travis. And, and Lorenzo was like, no, we're not going to do that because our deal was clothes and money like remind people um i spoke to lorenzo backstage before weigh-ins mm -hmm. uh when i was fighting uh, uh travis brown and um <clears throat> i told him i was like hey look man I, I don't like the reebok deal for this reason that for example henry hoofed right and i didn't throw him under the bus sure. he was but he was my, my mental person right, here. Right. i was like um you have a trainer that trains 35 that goes to 35 fights a year okay he gets, every time he comes in, he gets a new pair of shoes, shirts, shorts, clothes, whatever else, a bag, right? What the hell is one trainer going to do with 35 pairs of, of Reebok shoes? He's going to give that shit away. He's going to give it away. On, he's going to sell it on eBay or something else. But I'm the one, my blood and sweat and broken bones are the one who earned that contract. So I'm not even getting a lion's share of what the hell's going on. How does that make sense? I was like, so... Why don't we just do this? Why don't you guys issue the clothes? We have to give them back. There's always a, an allowance for one piece of article, one article or whatever, to disappear, and that gets replaced. If it's more than it comes out of your fight purse or whatever else, right? And now everybody gets issued something. So if they find out that Henry Hooft is coming uh, and Coach Greg is coming, right? Well, now Henry can't go because he has something going. So now you take Henry's issued clothing, put it back in the thing, and now uh, Coach Greg and Butta are going to come. Okay, now Butta gets his clothes shipped out, mm. right? And that's the way it goes. If they're new, there's always a Reebok person there to make sure everything's fine whatever else but then all, you launder all those clothes and they get shipped out so now instead of issuing these clothing and you keep them and henry has 35 pairs of shoes a year now you got all these clothes that get shipped back so with all the money that we have that's superfluous i having to buy the money from reebok or buy the clothes from reebok all that superfluous money gets put in a pool and those people get bonuses or had you know whatever fights or this number of fights or whatever else now all that money can go back to us at the end of the year no <laughs> That was it. That was it. He didn't even consider it. No, it was. He no, didn't the, say like, you know what? That's a good point. No, no, it was no. That our deal was clothes and money. Mm. Like, huh? Was that a tough thing to do to go up to him? No, you just did it. I'm too smart for my own good. Right. And I got giant balls, and I say things <laughs> that I think like, and I'm like, well, you know, hey, this is how I feel about that. And plus, like, we were getting dicked over. We we still are getting dicked over. Like, it, it's a rough gig, um, and. I have no problem standing up for myself or other people. And if I, I, I don't think that anybody that fights would come up to me and be like, that's not, I don't, I don't agree with that. Like, and if you would, I hope, I hope you do. Let's have a conversation about it. Um, but it just, to me, it doesn't make sense. I still think that you guys are getting, in your words, deed over from the TV stuff. We are. Like, with all due respect, Beltor is making a lot of money off of DAZN. For, for certain. How much are you getting from that? That that will be discussed in my next contract. Oh, when's it up? When I choose it to be. What do you mean? I'm like, well, I, I, I can retire whenever <laughs> I want. Sure. Yeah, that's you know? true. Contracts are. Yeah, contracts are. are but only how many worth do you have left? On. I have seven left. Seven. seven how many left. did you sign for? A nine fight. Forty-five. Deal. Nine fights. Mm -hmm. So you signed again. Mm -hmm. Why'd you sign a nine fight deal? 
I'll talk about that paper chase, dog. What we'll do you talk mean? about it afterwards. Okay. Is this weird? Nope. Nine fights is a lot. It's a lot. I've never heard of someone signing for nine fights. Well, you know, hey, I'm a businessman. So your other fight, your other contract expired, or did they give you a new one in the midst of the the, the initial one? They gave me a new one. Why? We renegotiated. Okay, but they said you got to sign nine fights. No, I asked for it. Why? Just the way I wanted to work it. <laughs> all right, you're happy with it. I'm very happy with it. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's all good. I told you I'm happier. Sponsor is all good. Yeah, really happy, man. I mean, yeah, I told you what it was like when I fought. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Fedor. Yeah. Um, so it, I mean, it's, how's it for this one? Uh, it's not the same. All it's right. less, but I mean, it's it's. I'm still a happy number, um, and uh, you know, it's 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 funny, man. Like the the sponsorship market ebbs and flows, um, and you know, the the sponsorship dollars for corporations, right? Like, that's another thing too. Like, something recently happened, and there and one of my main sponsors was like, "No, we're not going to go. We're not going to go into MMA." What happened? The Connor thing. Just things, man. Is that what you were referring to? Just things, brother. Don't tell me. How could it have happened like, in the last two days? No, I'm just saying. I'm like, it's, hey, why, so we're not going to Why don't you want to say? Just curious. Because there's, a, there's, always, there's always a possibility with stuff. Oh, okay, so you, you don't know? want to throw them I don't, the Yeah, I don't. Well, can you tell us why not who, but just why? Just curious why. You know, sometimes they see that uh, they just don't agree with where the sport goes. Okay. And they want to go different angles. So that's why you were passionate at the top of this when I asked you about what happened. Yeah. There's a trickle-down effect. There's a, a drastic trickle-down effect. And most people that that uh, don't have to go out and get sponsors, they don't have to worry about it anymore. But that's the main reason why I left. Like, that's how... Uh, like, I remember, like, when they started taking away... That's another thing, too. They started... They, the UFC, we would get performance bonuses, right? Mm. And then, like, you get discretionary bonuses. And I remember Chris Lytle, my mentor, hmm. I remember Chris telling me that, uh, I think, be careful with that. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, sooner or later, they're going to stop giving that money away because they're not obligated to do it. They're only obligated to give you this. He's like, so fight for every dime you get. Fight for it. Uh, and I was like, all right, man, I get it. Yeah, okay. And I had other people doing my negotiations at the time, so I was never personally involved. And then I found myself twice. I called up after fights. It was like six, seven weeks afterwards, and I would normally get a check. And I was like, hey, man, uh, is, that, is that check coming in? What's going on here? And I got, was getting paid so little that the amount of money I would get would dinner double my purse. I mean, it was a substantial amount of money. And, um, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, man, it should be in the mail. And then the next time I called, I was like, oh, we're not going to give that out this time. I've gotten it every other time. Like, why not? I got to come to – but then, but then I'm, at, I'm begging the man for a check that I've always gotten before. Sure. I'm not doing that. I'm a grown ass man. I'm not going to do that, man. That's not how that's going to work. I'm never going to have to ask you for money that you can just choose to give me or not, like an allowance. Yeah. Like what I didn't fight. Like, I, I know whenever I think about this in my head, I always think about Diego Sanchez when he's in a post fight interview saying, "Are you not entertained? Yeah. You know, like, you know, are you, did, are you not entertained? Did, did I not fight hard enough for you? Did I not? What did it not last? Did it not? Did it not last long enough for yeah, you? Yeah, like, yeah. what the hell is it? Like." I'm a heavyweight who throws hands and throws leather. I, I get out there and I scrap. And everybody knows if my name's on a card, whether you like me or not, you're going to see me scrap. Yeah. Like that's how it's going to get down. Um, and like, did, did you not like that? It's not worth like 15 grand, 20 grand to you? Like, what, really? And um, that's kind of what it was, man. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. I respect it. So I negotiate hard. I negotiate very hard now. Okay. How many more years do you want to do this? I'm young and spry, brother. Yeah. What are but, you, 37? Uh, now I'm 40, brother. What? 40 years old. You're 40 years old? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You look great. Oh, uh, thanks. I mean, you know, I got, that's why I got this lettuce chopped because it's got my gray hair in it. I don't see any gray hair. Uh, you know. I kind of like the long hair. I feel like it makes you look younger. You got to remember, I was a long hair for a long time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Football was, days. Yeah. That famous picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. That, uh, um, so, uh, you know, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm happy. Uh I enjoy it. Coach Greg and I talk about, uh, you know, if and or when I ever decide to be done, that uh, if I'll be involved in a sport, you know, if I'll, if I'll, what I'll do, if I'll just ride off in the sunset and disappear, get rid of my Instagram and my Twitter and I could see it. Poof out, I'm out. I could see it. You know, I, uh, we'll see. I, I never know what I'm going to do, but I'm happy. So I still think I'm one of the best in the world. I do too. Yeah. I remember doing an interview. Right before you fought Czech Congo at UFC 137, mm -hmm. October of 2011, Las yep. Vegas. And I said, and I remember exactly where I was. I was doing an interview with a sports station in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'll never forget it because I didn't really, back then, I wasn't confident enough to make bold proclamations. Mm -hmm. And I said, this time next year, Matt Mitrione will be the heavyweight champion of the world. I think I was on that path. 
I didn't I didn't know enough. I, I, I fighting Chet Congo, I fought him before I was prepared to because he was cagey and knew what he was doing, mm-hmm. and I was just scrapping. Um, and uh, he, t- he he capitalized on that. He, he did a good job. It was a smart fight plan for him. I still think I won that fight. Uh, and then I had a year of injuries, mm-hmm. and I was out until December, and that's when I came back and I fought uh, Roy the first time. Oh right, yes, of course. You know, yeah. and then uh, and that was off uh, a year off. Yeah, um, short notice too. No, but yeah, not really. I okay. had a, I had a fight. I was supposed to fight Tim Haig. Oh right, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Were you supposed to fight? Phil DeFreeze. Phil DeFreeze. I'm supposed to fight Phil DeFreeze, but it was two weeks later. So no, not really. No, okay, fair enough. Um, Just trying to give you an out there. Probably. Yeah, you're good. Mm-hmm. You're good. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so and I, I think that was a gimme, and I was like, you know what? They, it, I think it's I'll fight Roy. I go see what happens, and uh, Roy won. You know, and uh, then you got the rematch. Uh, I did. Revenge. I did. I feel like I How are things his, with you guys? I don't talk to him at all. You're done. Yeah. Not cool. Not cool. Not happy with him. No. Nope. No respect. Nope. That's a because you were friends, sort of. We we're cool. Yeah. So now destiny awaits. That's it, brother. Uncasville, Connecticut, this yeah. Friday. Now two fights in a row in Uncasville. Oh yeah, That's it's right. treated you well, right? Mm-hmm. I'm two part. and zero in Connecticut. Where's the About other to be one? Three and zero. Where's it? What was the other the, one? The Beast. Oh, of course. That's right. The, that right. was the one on the same night as, uh, I think, Bellator event. But um, you remember that? Mm-hmm. That was like in around September. Was that the card that Jacare fought Musasi? Yes. Yeah. Small cage. I yeah, think yeah, Musasi yeah. would win that fight nine out of ten times in a normal cage. Yeah, yeah. No small cages in Bellator, right? All nope. the same size? All the same. That's another one of my things. Yeah, of course. That was one of my I things I, I talked Silva. to the UFC yeah, yeah, yeah. about my contract negotiation. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that? No. Did I ever tell you this story? No. So they, they offered me, they doubled, pretty much doubled my purse, okay. right? From what it was to, like, this is before I fought Travis. Yeah, yeah. And I told them what I wanted, and they were like, because they called up and they offered me, well, I might as well tell it. I was at uh, 36 and 36. Yeah. And uh, Joe Silva called up and offered me 40 and 40, and I was like, go to hell. <laughs> like, lose my number. Don't don't contact me again. Um, and uh, and he was like, and I was like, I'm, I'm worth way more than 11% raise. Um, and then I get a call from uh, Lorenzo and, and Dana about a, a couple days later, and they're like, we understand you're not happy with it. And I was like, no. Like, How much are you worth? I was like, I have no idea. I was like, but I can quantify it, and I'll let you know. Took about a month or so. Did I ever tell you this story? No. Took about a month or so <laughs> to kind of quantify it, and I, I did quite a bit of number crunching, and I came up with a number that I, I felt like I was worth. So I came in there, and I was like, uh, <laughs> I went by myself with no, no attorney. Oh, my else. gosh. And so it was, it was Lorenzo, me, and, his, and their, their attorney. Okay. And uh, that was it, just us three. And he we were sitting in there. And um, I had a, a, a library of papers. And I was like, look, man, we can go through this, all this stuff if you want. I can quantify everything I'm going to tell you. Or we can just talk. And he's like, let's just talk. He's like, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to have in there anyways. Okay, cool. Like, I, I want this as a signing bonus. And I want this as a flat number. Can not, you tell us the numbers or no? I'd rather not. Okay. Um, but they were, they were significant. Okay. Um, and I was like, uh, and, and I want this as a, as, a, um, as a flat number. I don't want to show and win yeah. at all because you know what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he was like, um, he was like, well, we can't do a signing bonus because he kind of scoffed at my numbers. Okay. And he was like, uh, he's like, he's like, we can't do a signing bonus because if you go outside and get hit by a bus, we're gonna be out of that money, whatever else. And I was like, well, you, we're both football people. That's not legit. Yeah. Like, you pay me for what I read. You retroactively pay, reimburse me for what I've outperformed in my previous contract, right, right, right. and then we start square going forwards. That's right. how that works. Yeah, like, yeah. We're don't we're in the same hustle here, yeah, you yeah. know. <laughs> and um, and then. Uh, he goes, he goes, all right, well, he's like, well, I'm prepared to offer you 70 and 70, okay. which were they doubled. That was 36, yeah. 36, yeah. 70, 70. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And uh, and then he was like, uh, okay, well, why not? Oh, by the way, you're one of the only people that haven't signed the USADA form. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's a hustle. I'm not going to do it. It's window dressing. He's like, what do you mean by that? And I was like, and I, ex- I explained to him why it's window dressing and why it's not legit, right? If you're not doing a biological passport, uh, then you can stay microdosing the entire time. Forever, forever, forever. And then you'll never get caught because they're never testing. So if your levels don't flag or raise, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you're never going to get pinched. So you can always do it unless you drop test everybody out of the blue for every single drug possible. That's a a performance enhancer. I don't agree to it. So I'm a a conscious objector. By the way, Bob Costas, not calling football anymore, conscious objector to football. Right, right, right. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, So then, uh, and so we went down and I talked to like the drug czar guy. And then we're, he was asking there, and I was like, plus with all the peptides and stuff that you guys can't catch and don't test for, like it's just, it's a scam, man, whatever else. And so we got into that. So then I get a contract a little while later from Lorenzo, that's for Travis, for 70 and 70. And so I, I emailed him back, and I was like, look, I, I told you no, I won't do that. But what I will do is I'll accept that contract if every time I finish somebody inside of the top, 50, top 15, 
I get a $50,000 kicker. Every time I finish somebody outside of the top 15, I get a $25,000 kicker. Um, plus, because that'll, that'll bring me closer to my signing bonus on, and the money that I wanted. Um, I was like, then on top of that, uh, every time I have to, I, every time you guys have me fight in the small cage, I get an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars because I hate the small cage. Um, and um, and he wrote back. He's like, "I'm offended you'd even counter offer that." Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I was, was like, "Was he being serious?" Yeah, for sure. I'm offended. Yeah, I was like, "Why would I not?" Like, yeah, you sent me something. I told you I sure. said no yeah, to. Yeah, of course. You yeah, of course I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, and that's that was my last uh, correspondence with Lorenzo. Wow, that's the last time you spoke to him. Yep. I'm not sure we're cool. I mean, it's a business. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Nice. I saw Dana when I was out in Vegas last time. What, what happened? Um, like I saw him. He was at that table and we were at XS. I saw okay. him at the table there and I gave him the finger to kind of play around. And he looked at me and was like, gave me the finger back and went over and talked to him. We taught it for like 15 minutes. He's like, look, I'm happy for you. He's like, you got the money you wanted. He's like, I'm happy for you. He's like, you're doing a great job over there. He's like, it just wasn't a great fit for us anymore. He's like, uh, he's like, but we, we always keep an eye on you. He's like, you're doing a great job. Okay. Uh, and Tito was there. We were all, all three of us were talking. Wow. Yeah. What a trio. Yeah, it was good, man. It was cool. <laughs> of course. We saw this. We were in uh, excess. Yeah. You know, and they, uh, the table we were at, this dude had a bunch of money or something, a bunch of ones, like probably 500 bucks in ones, and okay. he was throwing it up in the air, making it rain. And this chick was like, and her, and her sister were crawling around on the floor, picking up the dollar bills, like stuffing them down their dress. And I was like, what? That really happens, man. Yeah. I didn't know that really happened in the world. Dana picking it up too? No, no. No, it wasn't. I think he was throwing hundreds. I, I love the fact that it's you and Tito. Yeah. Of course, Tito still like hates me over the whole Jenna thing, and you guys are hanging out there. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Tito and I get along, man. I know. It's great. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, he actually, when I was in London for, for the fight where I brought Jacob, yeah. Jacob was with me. We had yeah. a press conference, and Tito uh, actually watched Jacob for me. And he, the, his first thing he said to Jacob was, you know, my name's Jacob also. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's like, my name's Jacob also. What and a turnaround. Him and Jacob got along, man. Yeah. Tito's a good dude, good fella. Yeah. Yeah. He actually gives me advice at times. Really? Yeah. Like what? Matter of fact, he told me about, he told me something about fighting Bader. Really? Mm -hmm. Of course, you got the, the guillotine on him. Mm -hmm. What'd he tell you? Can't say. Wow. Maybe I'll tell you after I win. Unsolicited? Unsolicited. Just texted you? No, we talked. Called you? This is when I saw him in Vegas. Oh, wow. Yeah. And talked about it. Like, dude, he's fascinating. We get along pretty well. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, especially for where it came from. Yeah, he's got to be a pretty big dude because I, I was making aggressive jokes. And okay. I even told him I apologized to him though. Yeah, yeah. Um, after I lost to Chet Congo, uh, I think we were in excess. Yeah, and uh, that's your spot. Yeah, right. And um, and I saw him and I was like, "Hey, man, uh, I'm sorry." Like I was uh, I was making jokes because I was I was on a roll and I was trying to make a name for myself. I was like, "And they just you just happened to be the person I, I decided to make the butt of it." And he's like, you know what? And I appreciate the fact you're big enough to come over here and say that. And we've been cool ever since. Don't ever apologize for the Mitrio minute. I mean, really. Do we? If it wasn't for that. You guys pulled them all off the line. They're not even online them. anymore. I don't work for that company anymore. I don't know who did it, but you can't know. even find them anymore. Yeah. It's a like big with my, I was trying to put on my sizzle reel and it was like, nothing. Mm, there's nothing there. I wish I could help you. I wish you had some pirated copies. I got nothing. I know some somebody in their web. Someone, got yeah. Somebody's put got it out there. We'll Let's see what happens. It. I wish you the best, Matt. Thanks, bro. What a pleasure. It was great to catch up with I, you. I, I, I'm a chatterbox. I appreciate you making the time for and me. What a, what an unbelievable handshake you have. Like it's just like your hands are so big. Oh, right on. It's like yeah. I didn't mean to squeeze you, brother. No, no, it was great. Oh, you right have a on. scar there. Yeah. What fight? Ryan Jimmo. Oh wow. May yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, Canadian. Yeah, fellow yeah, Canadian. Yeah. Um, I threw an uppercut, hit him in the forehead, and. All she wrote. That year of injuries, 2012? Yeah. That's a that was in training because you were training partners, one. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this Friday, Uncasville, Mohegan Sun, Ryan Bader, Matt Mitrione. Then Saturday, it's Shell versus Fyodor. Will you be there if you win? When you win? I will be there when I win. After I win, I will be there. You're going to go? Yes. Even though you have this no fighting rule. Mm -hmm. You don't watch fights, you're going to be there. I'm going to be there. I, I want to see... I want to see the fight. You want to see it in person? Yeah, I want to see it in person. We're doing a post-fight show there for ESPN+. Plus. We'd love to have you when you win. When I order ESPN+. Plus? No, no, no you'll, have, you'll be on the set. Okay. We're going to be there. Okay, yeah. good, let's do it. Let's How about get, that? Let's ESPN do it. going to Bellator. Let's, hold on. Eat Something's your heart going, out. Something's going on Yeah. Here. Good. It's the Helwani it. World Order, the HWO. HWO. I'm ready for it. This. That's it. Like this. That's it. Too sweet. Pew. Let me feel it. That's an H. Yes. Let's see what it is. Now, can you sign our, our sign before you go? I'm, I'm, I'm that we're, guy now? We're starting to build something here. Let's do it, brother. Look, as you can tell, there's plenty of signatures. Plenty of signatures. <laughs> there's only three at the moment, right. but we'll have four after you. Let's do and it. And then we're going to give it away to charity. Are you? Yeah. I hope I don't lessen the value. 
No, no, you're going to. There's Chael, so if you want to go far away from him since he said that you're an easy opponent. I'm going to ride it over him. Fair, fair, <laughs> fair enough. You can go do it right now. Let's do it. It's not a big production in terms of walking you out. Let's do it. Here he goes, Matt Mitrione, who is looking more, more spelt right? than ever. There are the, uh, yep, there are the, the Sharpies. Are you really going to do it over him? Right over oh. him. <laughs> yes, I can confirm. That's your signature? It is, it's right? an M and a line. That's my autograph. Not my signature. Okay. Big deal. All right. Hey, are we done? We're done. Thanks, bro. Thank you, Matt. A lot of fun, man. Thanks, guys. Greg, thank you. Thank Greg looks really bored back there, I must say. Oh, Greg is not he's, he's getting out of here. I don't know what's going on. Do you have your own like social media guy here? What's going on? Listen, oh, hey. How are you? Yeah. Take this care. This guy is a lucky man. Takes pictures of beautiful women all the time. Must be nice. See you, see you, brother. Matt, I will see you. Hey, there's Danny. Enjoy the baseball game. Take care, guys. <laughs> there they are. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you Bye, Matt. There he goes. Matt Mitrione fighting Ryan Bader this Friday, Uncasville, Connecticut. How about it? Great time. And then, of course, on Saturday, it is Chelsea Sonnen versus Fyodor Emelianenko, the semifinal. We shall be there, Long Island, New York.